Oh boy, this is going to be so fun for me. I relish this tabletop review on the Ruger LC Carbine in 5.7 by 28 mm. We're going to have a good time. I will ruin the drama of my review, my tabletop review, early. So if you're in a hurry, um, well, in just a minute or two, you'll know how I feel about this gun. And I bet some of y'all went out and bought it already. Not waiting for my review. That happens all the time. And maybe you're hoping you're going to get a confirmatory review on just how awesome your purchase decision was. Well, where's my cone? Here it is. My advice to you is if you purchased a Ruger LC carbine is to sell it immediately. You made a mistake. All right, that's pretty much the review. There's no way I would buy this gun. No way, it's a, I will say a non-recommend. That's harsh. It's not a non-recommend. It just has elements to it I really dislike. And uh, when they added, when I add it all up, it's just like, no, no, I, I wouldn't buy it. And if you bought it, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to see a comment or two about guys who love it. Um, I don't know. And I, I didn't click around and see what guys are saying on this. I'm sure most of it should be positive because Ruger has a lot of influence over the industry. They give a lot of guns away. I think I'm not positive about that. But uh, all the industries, all the stuff you watch on social media, except me, of course, is corrupted TPA horseshit. And so, of course, you're going to see a lot of positive stuff on it. Oh, my goodness. There's no way I'd buy this gun. Here's the first thing I have. This is this really sticks in my craw. Okay, I reviewed the Ruger 5.7. This is my gun. I bought it. It's a cast member. It's awesome. The Ruger 5.7 is mostly awesome, other than magazines hard to load. Accurate, reliable, fun to shoot, all of the above. Go watch my review. In that review, I said, hey... I bet you, I bet you, I predicted it. I say, I bet you they're going to come out with a companion carbine to the Ruger 5.7, and that is without talking to anyone in Ruger, and not that they would ever talk to me. They hate my guts. So here it is. Bo voila, here it is. We have a Ruger LC carbine. But wow, this is what sticks that? in my craw. This is what irritates me, and it should irritate you. The movement in, let's call it survival carbines, is something very lightweight, very compact, very portable that you can integrate into a survival kit. Duh. Duh. When I pull this out of the box at Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store, round of applause for Wyatt. It's only Wyatt. No one else there is helping me. It's just Wyatt. Wyatt, thank you very much, dude. Um, yeah, when I pulled it out of the box, he's like, hey, you want to review an LC carbine? I was like, oh, sure. Pulled it out of the box. I was like, I hate it. I hadn't even shot it yet. Uh, yeah, it's got, you know, it looks cool. It looks cool. Look at the weight, naked. Five pounds, 15 ounces. So they made it made, made it look like that Bren gun with a, it's like an all metal rail. This is what happens when Ruger doesn't copy anybody. They get it all screwed up. Holy crap. And I have given them heat for copying other people. I think most reviewers have, and they do copy a lot. This is basically a copy of a, an FN 5.7. Some changes, basically the same gun. I mean, who, who understands this concept? Do I even have to tell you? Goodness gracious, it's obvious. Keltec understands it. Here's a sub 2K and 9 mil taking Glock magazines it weighs well it weighs something but it's a lot lighter than this one and it folds in half and i'm just going to tell you guys love that they like something that just goes transformer like and it folds into sections the more james bondy you can make it the more it's going to sell i know this has got a, a side folding stock and that's good i'm going to give it props for that but i don't i don't know how they got the weight wrong so wrong on this. It should weigh, let me be realistic. I'm not expected to be a total featherweight, but if they would have made it weigh 
four pounds, three ounces, doing whatever they need to do technolog technology wise, I think I would be a lot more excited and I could forgive some of the idiosyncrasies it has, the Ruger LC carving. Outfitted as you see it, granted, this is not the lightest one piece mount on there. It's a discontinued M223 and it's a Vortex basic, basic scope. Uh, it's seven pounds. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> granted, I'm giving some of the weight, the uh, fault of the weight to my choice of optic. I just had it in, in storage and I was like, oh, I just don't want to go buy an optic for this. I didn't want a high power optic for it and it worked. For testing, it worked. But let's say I put something lighter weight. Let's say I put a red dot on it. I'm still over six pounds. And that's unloaded. And that's without anything else on it. That's without a sling on it, maybe a flashlight. Uh, you could easily end up with an eight pound, five, seven, 28, 20 round magazines. Hey, if that's your jam, that's your jam. And I'll, let me throw this in too while we're at it. I'm really unmotivated to review more 5728s until the ammunition situation drastically improves. It's what I said in 2009. It's totally played out that way. I said, unless this ammunition becomes just as available as 556, it's not going to be a market success. Now, I think Ruger 5.7, when the introduction of this pistol, gave it some oomph, but then the whole crash of the ammunition industry happened. I think this was in the works before that happened and so they got to see the project through. They put money into it and so it comes out when 5728 is very expensive, hard to find, and I'm not gonna go down the whole POU on the caliber. I've said it in so many reviews. Bottom line, run a 556. More capable, better range, harder hitting. Is it is SAWC efficient? No. But does it matter when you got a six pound gun? Naked, does it matter? Who cares how light the ammo is? You're, you're running a six pound gun. Would I ever integrate this? Here we go to POU. Would I ever integrate this into a bug out kit? Would you? Hell no. It's just a fun gun, nothing. Okay. If you say it's just a fun gun, seriously, I, I sign off on that philosophy of use. If you just say, hey, I just bought it. I like it. It turns me on. It's a second cool thing. I know it's not the best out there. I know it's heavy. Uh, okay. I'm cool with that, but they got it wrong in terms of weight. I think the size is appropriate. It's not a it's not a large firearm, 29 inches overall length. It's okay. That's in the ballpark. I mean, it's not like this. The sub 2K is shorter still. Granted, that sucker folds in half. Just copy Caltech Ruger. Just copy Caltech. Make a sub 2K. In a 5728 yeah, with like your twist on it, like you did this. So this is basically your FN57. You put your twist on it, you change a few things. Okay. That's what you're good at, I guess. Oh my goodness. Philosophy of use, survival carbine, no. Home defense, no. Uh, that's an underpowered cartridge. A vehicle gun, no. I'd run an Air 15 pistol, I'd run a Draco, I'd run a folding stock AK. I hope you would too. I'd run a 10 mil Glock before I'd run this. Now, I'm being a little bit funny here, just slightly. I am mostly serious, but there is some humor here. I do make my reviews entertaining. 5728 is still a valid caliber. I'm not saying it isn't. That Here's my gun. I bought one. I like it. It's not right for every situation though. It's a niche caliber. Here I go again, talking about the whole caliber thing again. But as a truck gun, a vehicle gun, no. Bush plane gun, hell no. A fun gun. And maybe that's what you said, dude, on the other end, no. How in the world are you going to afford to shoot 5728? And we talked about in the last review that is chambered in this caliber, they have to be specially lubricated at the factory. Hmm, just like Honeymoon Night. Yeah, specially lubricated, and so there's not that many places that even make it driving to the shortage you continue to see year after year and the high prices you continue to see. Now, if you could give me the no kidding, FM produce, what was it, the uh, SS109, I always get the designation wrong. Whatever the penetration round was, that's what the PS90, the P90 was designed for. 
So this is good. Different, so different story. Now I'm excited again because that is a great little round. It outperforms its size. Philosophy of use. Hunting? You might be surprised that I'll say yes. For certain certain animals, but we're going to look at accuracy and you might have a question mark on that. Because if I'm running such a tiny little bullet, I, I need to be more accurate. As we've gotten back into air guns here in TMP, you're seeing that theme come out again that an air gun that is not accurate really is kind of worthless when it comes to pest control. You, you might say that for... And I don't want to like make this gospel, but for a 5.728 carbine, you might say that as well. It's got to be pretty darn accurate. Into POU, let's go into features. Um, you you could have watched, stopped watching this video because I already told you I wouldn't buy it, right? Usually I wait to the end. <laughs> I create drama. Before I get into features, I want to talk about this too. So Gunny's price is 800 bucks. I think that's fair. But the retail on this is $980. Dude, are you, did I did I read that right? Oh yeah, you read it right. Nine nine eight. Let's call it a thou, a cool thousand. Good job, Ruger. Good job. That's a real value firearm, dumbasses. Oh, I can't believe I said that out loud. I'm so sorry. How much is your sub two K? Way less than that. It's not in five seven twenty eight, but dude, dude, th this is a great gun. If you don't have a sub 2K, something's wrong with you. Literally, something is wrong with you. Seek Let's therapy. You right. should just have this. It's just awesome. Quirky at times? Mm, kind of. It's mostly awesome, though. Yeah. Look, this earring is inexpensive. See, Pakeltex gets it. Polymer. Not metal. Not metal. Okay, go back to my SHOT Show videos when I went to the Robinson Arms booth and I gave Robinson some heat because his guns were so heavy. What were they made, made like? Just like this. Just like this. They were made with a bunch of metal in them and they are super heavy. And at the time, I was fighting in the Nut and Fancy Project. This is going back to like 2010. I was fighting the whole people don't pay attention to weight thing and it took me a long time to make headway with that. And I, I ranted in every review, what in the hell are people doing? They don't consider weight. And here we are with a new gun that totally blows off all the progress we've made. At least attention and attempt to make the gun lightweight. This is like a Robinson Arms, circa 2008. It, it, as soon as I took it out of the box, I was like, oh, Golly, I've been down this road before and I hate it. Anytime I see a monolithic metal chassis, whether it's on a, a Brent, a CZ, uh, a Beretta, any type of gun that uses that, I, I, I'm just like, mm. Now, I will discount AR-15s with lightweight rails. And they don't have this much metal. So all this is metal right here, dudes, and the LC carving. That's where all your weight's coming from. This bottom half right here, Polymer, so that's the lower housings polymer and we're not field stripping it because that's boring it, So there's some attempt at polymer the to trigger housing very 5.7 like by the way They copied the pistol grip easier to do with the mold very similar on the trigger guard But metal metal AR-15 has a very short chunk of metal It's a 7,000 series if you get a good one forged aluminum receiver and then it's that's basically all it is and then you put a Try rear barrel of choice could be a lightweight like barrel it. very lightweight handguard you can have an ar-15 without even trying very hard lighter than this okay, you slow lighter down. than this so the first thing i want to say when we're talking about features that i totally dislike is i don't like the handguard now if you've bought it have you put it up for sale yet if not you shouldn't <laughs> i I honestly think this is not going to be super successful for Ruger. Uh, it won't be just my review. It'll be people who get it and just carry around in their backpack and they go, why am I carrying a 5728 that weighs seven and a half pounds? If they're smart, they'll do that. Some people don't get it. They'll just go, oh, this thing's awesome. This handguard sucks. It's M-Lock capable. I get it. We can put a VG on it. That's cool. But it's squared. I mean, is this a bench rest gun? You can put a bipod on it. And every time I pick this thing up, I'm just going, holy cow. 
granted, I have not a super lightweight optic and mount on there. I'm being very honest about that. But I just, yeah, okay, okay. Now the barrel thickness is good. I'm sure the barrel quality should be pretty darn good. It's 16. 0.25 inches it has a half by 28 threading on it ready for a suppressor that's good the fluting on it as you can see inside the handguard is interesting uh, i'm not really sure why they fluted it is it because you're trying to save weight because it doesn't show it doesn't manifest oh let me rant about this too no fancy keep ranting that's why we watch thank you well you know it's honest right there's no horse shit going on here why did you pick rail this whole thing dude you should have done like pick rail on top of the receiver, smooth, and maybe removable sections if dude wants to add some, but this is all metal, which we do not need. Granted, I think some guys fantasize about putting an NV on there, a night vision piggyback device. I think the percentage of dudes doing that is like less than 1%. So this is all extra metal we're carrying. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't like it. Uh, the barrel diameter, I really don't have a problem with. The barrel length, I really don't have a problem with. But the metal, yeah. The sights are very embussy. They're very similar to embuss. They're proprietary Rugers. They they are pretty pretty good. I mean, these sights are good. I if I had them on AR15, I would not take them off. I would definitely change out that hugely thick front sight post. I hate those. But they're locking. I can't extend that one because it's underneath the optic. Oh, that it includes backup sites. I'm going to give them a plus. That's cool. Okay. Non-reciprocating charging handle. It is swappable. This is a plus. Here comes some good stuff. I'm being honest. Good stuff. It is swappable left to right. So you can actually make this a very lefty friendly firearm. You can switch everything over. So that's awesome. I mean, that's cool, right? You can get in your manual, figure out how to do that if that's what you want. Cool. The trigger. You know, I meant to measure it. I'm so sorry I didn't. I did not measure the trigger, but I will say this. I, I, I'm not super impressed with it. it. On tabletop, it seems like it's pretty good. Like, I, I was like, oh, that get, feels good. Do I have like a digital scale here? I probably do not because I, oh, I do. I do. And it has a blade in safety, right? And they call it, the whole thing is called a secure action fire control system. It has an internal ha hammer. So, well, just like that. This is basically a 5.7 turned into carbine form. And if you were to pull them apart and, and look down on top of them, they're identical almost. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So, one more safety check. Magazine out. Blowback action, by the way. So, it has a big, heavy bolt in it. That's where some of that weight's coming from, no doubt. Watch it pull super light. <sighs> That's not bad. Four, 410. I, I'm still saying I don't like it. I was in the field and I was saying that. I was like, this trigger is not really precise. 615 on that one? I don't know how I got that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys would love it a lot more than me. I, I still don't like the trigger. It's just weird. I think the 5.7 trigger is better. That's 5.3. Let's just call it a 5.3 trigger. Magazine release right here. And it's uh, obviously in the pistol grip magazine. This uses 5.7 mags. And these mags are good. But like I said, they are hard to load. Uh, they are hard to load. And you just got to spend some time with them. That's just what is what it is. Uh, there's, if this thing succeeds in the marketplace, there's going to be higher capacity magazines come out. If the protectionists, leftists, communists will allow it there's my message to them by the way who knows i mean everything's on the table in this clown world we live in udr upside down or right who knows you may be stuck with these and you'll be lucky to have them because they want to go to 10 round they want to make it just like california nationwide in the united states of america here's a look inside the grip is just like the 57 i mean the grip on the 57 is awesome it's laser stippled that's just what i call it these are all mimmed parts, by the way. That is a metal trigger, not a polymer trigger. Not bad. I mean, all that's good. Ambidextrous safety. You don't even have to swap that over. Okay, here's another thing. Here comes another rant. I, I don't like the safety. Uh, and do we need it? Uh, yeah, I kind of like it on this gun. Even though I have a blade, blade in the trigger, I kind of like it. Um, 
I, I think the trigger, I, like here's me shooting it, right? You're gonna see this in video and then I have to come all the way back up. I gotta change my grip to flip on the safety. And it seems like the pivot should be here and that it would be just like that. Like reverse this, pretend these are these controls are reversed. Maybe make your action release button up here so a guy can stretch up here. Safety should be here, but no, we're coming all the way back here. Is it a big deal to me? Yes. I'm being honest, it's a big deal. I was in the in the field shooting this and it was annoying the heck out of me. I was like, holy cow, I hate that. I really hate that the safety's there. Could I have ignored it? Yes. Still hate it. Still hate it. 1913 pick rail on the top. Here's a look at this side. You can see the uh, big old bolt there. There's yours. Recoil spring. Guide rod in there. And then uh, the good thing is this is a folding stock. I think the stock is very strong. I think the pivot mechanism, mimmed of course, uh, is good enough. It really is. I like it. Um, I did say they should have made it fold in half. Uh, listen, I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to stand my ground on that and make it like a James Bond gun. This isn't quite James Bondy enough to sell. Make it so it's like a suitcase gun like that kel -Tec. How often do guys really shoot their sub 2Ks? Not very often, but they love that it folds in half. They love that it goes in that tiny case I showed you. This will go in a tiny case. I mean, once you have it folded, but look how thick that is. There's always something, right? Always something. So here's your locking mechanism on the LC carbine. It is decent. I'm giving it props for being a good locking mechanism. Is there any wiggle in that locking mechanism? Minor, very minor, and it's attached appropriately. I do like that. There's your cheek rest right here. You do have some adjustability for length of pull. It's very minor. There's your button to fold it. And you have some QD cups here. There's a cup here. Uh, I thought there was one on the front here. Well, you got that one, I guess. I'm probably missing some stuff, but, but honestly, I'm sorry, I don't really care because I don't like the gun. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wished I liked it. I was out there testing. I was like, man, I'm going to take this on multiple outings. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. I bought like a ton of ammo for it. I spent like hundreds of dollars on 5728 because my supply was exhausted. And in the end, I was like, mm, I, didn't really, I didn't really have fun shooting it. I didn't. I, and we're kind of done with features. If I remember something I forgot, I'll let you know. But um yeah i just wasn't out. i i thought the ruger 57 was way funner to shoot can you imagine that like if i had that same quantity of ammo and you said hey you can shoot this or that i'd go oh, dude i'd shoot that all day long that's a fun gun to shoot tactical doodle agreed super fun yeah by the way uh psa's making a gun that's a knockoff of this it's called the psa rock 57 Maybe I put a link to that below. And I think the mags are interchangeable. I think the PSA Rock 57 uses these mags, or so I've been told. How did it shoot? Uh, listen, I want to be honest. It's not a crappy gun altogether. As far as reliability goes, it was 100%. I don't remember any stoppages. I'm representing that. Fun factor was low for me. I just, it was too darn heavy. Every time I'm shouldering it, I'm like, no. Here's your accuracy. So this is at 50 yards. Granted, I have a low power scope, but I have a scope. It's not a red dot. 50 yards in the desert, 20 mile an hour crosswind. I'm going to give it some allowance for that. Look, look at what I said. I told you trigger down arrow, safety down arrow, accuracy down arrow. Now you be the judge whether that's a fair assessment. I had one type of ammo. It's federal ammo, 5728. I could have fed it with different rounds and maybe I would have achieved better, better accuracy. Maybe if I put a higher power scope on there, maybe if I shot in less wind because I shoot operationally, these groups would have tightened up. Let me bottom line it for you. Had they positioned the safety differently, if the gun weighed four pounds, three ounces, and all the rounds went in this yellow portion, it'd be a different review. There you go. I just bottom lined it for you. This is at 10 yards. 10 yards, uh, it's acceptable accuracy. Getting back to my ha hunting point, this is at 50 yards, what's, what's it gonna do at 100? 
it was shooting like this at like 50 yards. I was like, mm, no, I'm not gonna push it to 100. Not on that day when it was so windy. So reliable accuracy. I'm not gonna say it's horrible, it's not. The accuracy is, I, I, it barely goes in the good category for me. That is not horrible accuracy. I'm not even gonna say it's fair accuracy. Yeah, w would I buy one? You know the answer, no, hell no. No, it's too heavy. It, to me, it doesn't represent anything special. Okay, if you're gonna come out, Ruger, if you're gonna come out with a carbine, make it friggin' cool. Okay, make it polymer, texture the whole damn thing like this right here, make it fold in half, make it four pounds, have some cool new features nobody's seen before, it would sell like crazy. I do think the guys are going out and buy it, are gonna go out and buy it, just like some of y'all have, and then they're gonna kinda of clue in, they're like, this thing is too damn heavy. It's too heavy. And they're gonna put it up for sale. I think it'll be like that uh, uh, that gun sight scout rifle that I railed on years ago. <laughs> Ruger hated me for that. I was like, yeah, I hate this thing. It's, and I don't think that thing has ever sold well. Uh, I think this will sell, I'm gonna be honest, I think it's gonna sell a little bit better because some guys just like the looks of it. It is kind of cool looking, has a folding stock. Some guys will just eat that up. That it, it can be transported in a very short overall package. But if they do their homework, if they do their arithmetic and find out they're shooting a relatively underpowered cartridge for a relatively heavy platform, their eyes should be open and they'll go, what am I doing? Why am I spending so much money on this? This is stupid. Stick with an AR-15, seriously. I love this patch. Zero F's duck. That's a little bird patch. That thing was expensive too. What a cool patch that is. Uh, this is a Mora Bushcrafter, I think. Is this the Bushcrafter model? I think it is. Carbon steel, sick knife. I'll put some Mora links below. They're so excellent. Then we have the Perrin Mini. Such a great light. Comes with a cool headband. I need to post my review on that. I've already reviewed it. My watch for this uh, ranting gun review is a beautiful Alpina start timer with a railroad track outer scale. Eat your heart out. No longer available. Yeah, I might put a link to that before, but man, the Alpina start timers have gone up, up, up in price. When I bought this one, it was like a song and a dance, and now they're, they're expensive. Uh, this is like a cheapo... Casio Mudmaster homage. I don't know if my watch reviews will survive, honestly. The views have been crap. Crap, this is a Bow River. Beautiful Spyderco field knife. I've promoted it a lot because I just love it so much. Here's another Moro, by the way. This one's sick. This one's super inexpensive, stainless. By the way, this is the one I put in my DSKs. This exact one in either light blue or fluorescent orange. They're so inexpensive, they're stainless. I wouldn't run a carbon steel knife in my uh, day hike survival kits and we are done. Thanks again, seriously, to my donors. They are the reason this ex this video exists. They're the reason I went out in 100 degree temperatures and blowing winds to test this. And I wish I had better news for you on the Ruger LC carbine, but it is what it is and that's why you keep a watching nothing fancy.